Welcome back, folks. I doubt. <clears throat> Dow right now down 80. We get the Nasdaq off 308. S&Ps are off 50. Let's get over to our man, Tim Ord, as we kick off 2024. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen Oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle.com. Tim Ord, Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, too. <coughs> so, um, actually, I sent over some charts. Oh, I got them all. Did you seven by a chance? This is going to be a beauty, folks. I can't wait to hear this one, man. <laughs> right. Did, did you get chart number seven, though? I did. Yes, I did. All right. All right. So, anyhow, about, I don't know, 10 minutes ago, I can't remember, I don't know, a few minutes ago, I sent out a uh, a, um, a notice or an update, alert, yeah. I guess. We're going into long. Uh, we're going along on the SPX on tonight's close, and the only reason why I'm doing that is it's chart seven here. Okay, chart, now that's what I. That's why uh, I was chart, so excited to have you. Well, I'm always excited to have you on, but as soon as I saw that come across, I says, "Okay, let me see what this is now." Okay, <laughs> it's just kind of a obscure stuff, but anyhow, it worked over the years. But anyhow, the bottom window is a ten day arms. Okay, do, Tim, Tim, I'm sorry. Which which chart do you want me to start with? Seven? Uh, which? Yeah, chart with seven. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay. All right. Anyhow, I sent out an alert just a few minutes ago, yes. five, ten minutes ago. And the reason why I sent this alert because of this chart. And uh, it, there's some other stuff going on on the bigger time frames, and we'll cover it. But uh, usually when you get the trend up around 1.2, you don't really – you're getting close to some sort of a low. Okay. It doesn't mean it has to be the same day, whatever. But what really has worked over the past – actually several years, is when the market's up five days in a row, or six or seven, but at least up five days in a row, the market's usually higher 83% of the time within five days. Um, so anyhow, we been, we were up five days going into December 28th, and we fell, uh, fell back a couple of days, but it shouldn't be the final high. I uh, see. So I'm, I'm thinking either today's a low or possibly tomorrow I'll turn around Tuesday. Okay. But normally when you get five days up in a row, the market will be higher within five days. And a lot of times it's over a percent, sometimes percent and a half. So, okay. so I'm thinking the next rally up, we're probably going to hit new highs and stuff. So okay. um, that's that's the reason why I went long on tonight's close. So wherever tonight's close is is where I'm long. So we'll I like see how it. that works out. Okay, good. Good, I get it. All right, because we, right. we certainly so certainly don't have fear in the market right now, right? Not a lot. And no. I'm thinking what the pattern's going to form here. You know, uh, if you do a Fibonacci relationship today on today's decline, we're over 61.8 percent to the downside. So I'm thinking this is probably three drives to a top pattern. So we we already have two lows. If today or tomorrow is a low, and we had a low back on, you know, that red. That red candle there, yes. you know what? Seven seven days ago, that's right. That's low one. Today's low two. Yeah. Uh, or uh, and we have we make a higher high, then that'd be three drives to a higher high. Then a lot of times, that's why I'm thinking it's going to happen here. Okay. It's not going to be a long term rise up. I think it's going to be a higher high than we're going to probably start entering into some sort of a consolidation phase uh, through January. Which would make but, sense. Uh, no, that's pretty cool. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. All right. So, anyhow, so it's, it's maybe a 2 3% trade, so all, nothing huge. Yep. Okay, start chart, chart number one. Okay. We've gone over this so many times since That's all November. right. That's all right. But, but it's just uh, kind of review. Yep. On October 27th, we hit... Uh, uh, the summation index hit 8.13, and for a bullish imminent term uh, trigger to, to occur, the summation has to go below minus 700, which is like a selling climax. Yep. Then within two, within around two months, it has to go above plus 1,000 uh, to show a sign of strength, and that's what happens at imminent term lows. And I marked all those imminent term lows going back to 2007, wherever it is. And on uh, uh, December 27th, exactly two months, uh, we got above uh, plus 1,000. And uh, this is the date there is, uh, looks like uh, December 28th, whatever, and we're at uh, 1,078. But anyhow, there's a high probability the next 12 months will be up because of this indicator. Yes. And they really work pretty, pretty good. Has there been failures? Not many. 
but if you go back 50 years, you probably could find some. Okay. But going back to at least uh, last, what, 10, 15 years, there's none. So, uh, so anyhow, that's bullish air midterm. Let's flip to chart two. Okay. Uh, chart two, uh, the middle window is the uh, SPX VIX ratio. And it kind of shows what's going on in here. We're, we're starting to get a divergence. And uh, the pink areas show the times when the S&P was making higher highs in this ratio is making lower highs. And it happened back in um, December of 2022. You got a minor high. What market went down. You got another one in July of, of this year, late July, early August, where the S&Ps were going higher. Uh, the ratio kind of went sideways. But if you look at the VIX, which is top window, it actually did make lower highs or higher, uh, yeah, lower lower highs. So yeah, it was making higher lows as uh, the S&Ps were making higher highs, and that's divergence. And we got one right now where the S&Ps over the last couple of weeks is making higher highs, and this ratio is also uh, making lower highs. So that's why I'm saying probably the next rally on the SPs, we hit another new high, and this ratio does not hit a new high. Then we're probably going to have some sort of a worthwhile consolidation in July or oh, in, in, in January. January. Okay, cool. how big a one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll right. have to wait and see. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's, pre- it's pretty sign. interesting today, Tim. Uh-huh. You know, we had the VIX get up to fourteen twenty three. You know, but it, it has already given up. It's only a thirteen forty four right now. It gave up quite a bit of it, man. So it's kind of intriguing, actually. You know. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, I watched that too. It really blasted open. Yeah. On that this morning, it really went up. Yeah. Then it kind of came back. It's still up. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a little divergence here. You know, it's, sometimes I play these short term trades, and sometimes you get spanked a little bit. And so I don't know. I'm I'm thinking I'm going to be all right in this this one, but uh, yeah. man, I think it's a two three percent trade. So I'm thinking I'm taking it. If it was one percent or less, I think I, I no no. I, yeah, listen, I get it. I you know I, I I'm so I can tell you I'm surprised that you know I mean the Dow Industrials actually went positive today at one point. So it's like there's not that a lot. There's you know the S and P that well the the Nasdaq's a different animal, man. I mean the Apple's taking the Nasdaq south in a monster way. Um, but, you know, <laughs> that Dow Industrials went uh, green. <laughs> it's like, really? <laughs> but it did. You know, yeah. It's red now, but it went yeah, green. The, you know? Yeah, there's not a lot of stocks in it. You know, who knows? I don't even right. pay attention to that thing right. anymore. Right. NASDAQ's kind of important. But, uh, yep. hey, yeah, this, this is uh, uh, the SPX VIX ratio is giving uh, kind of a warning sign. Okay. Uh, you want to go to chart three? We're almost out of time, I know. Yeah, sure. we'll get, I get chart three here. Yeah, let's just let's just wait for a second. We'll start chart three, folks, as soon as we come back. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim. You can get his newsletter at ord, O-R-D, hyphen oracle.com. That's ord, hyphen oracle.com. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 75, NASDAQ off 314, S&P's off 51. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oyd, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading down 77. Nasdaq's off 314. S&P's are down 51. And I have, uh, let's see. I think I get shot three up, Tim. Is that right? Yeah, okay. yeah chart three. Yes, okay. That's what I have. Yes. All right. So uh, uh, chart two is the SPX VIX ratio. Chart three is the BIX to BVIX ratio. Yes. And uh, these ratios on the VIX seem to work pretty well. And it kind of gives you a head, heads up. Uh, the the time that, what's going on right now, the S&Ps are making higher high. If you look at back in July, which that previous pink area. Yes. The S&Ps were making higher highs. That ratio is just going straight up. We got something similar here going here. Uh, we got the S&Ps making higher highs, and this ratio is making lower highs. So something's coming at us probably, you know, the next couple of weeks, whatever. You know, I don't think it's t- uh, today. I don't think this is a, the one to catch to the short side here because I think okay. you know, as of chart seven, we're thinking we're going to – but anyhow, this is a warning sign that we're probably hitting some sort of a consolidation sometime you know it's starting to look like maybe mid-january or something you know not this week uh, maybe next week uh we'll have to wait and see so that's two different ratios showing kind of a 
a sign yes. that uh, the January may not be an up month. I'll put it that way. So let's chart. Let's go to chart four. Okay. Yeah, now this is the VIX VIX ratio, also, but it's on the weekly time frame. Right. So this is looks. So, so this looks at the bigger trend. So you know, if we do get a a, a January pullback sometime to say second half of January, but this ratio here, you know, is not showing any divergence at all. So that next decline we may have in January at some point, you probably want to buy it because the bigger trend, according to the weekly VIX VIX ratio, is making lower lows as the SP is making higher highs, and that's the positive divergence. So we're not having any major divergence on the bigger time frames yet. This kind of goes along with our uh, you know, the uh, summation index sitting below minus 700, rallying to plus 1,000. Yes. This is another way to look at the market on the bigger time frame. Okay. So, nice. Well, if we get, yeah, so we get a slap in the face, say, the second week in, in January, this is one of the reasons why you should probably buy it. Uh, cause nice. This ratio is not showing any, any yep. deterioration on the bigger time frames. So that, that uh, leans bullish. So... Uh, we got five minutes left. All right. Yep. Let's go to chart five. Okay. And uh, this, uh, it's hard to make charts really legible. Um, and I, I try to break them down where you can kind of look at them, see what's going on. And this chart, you know, the middle window is the Sprout Gold Trust discount premium ratio. Yes. And so a Sprout Gold Trust is actually you can buy physical gold through this trust and so uh every time and, and the middle window there shows the premium and discounts what you can buy for and i right now uh, anything below minus two going back to uh, uh looks like about 2018 you're at a uh short-term low uh for gdx wow that's and pretty that's cool a, okay yeah so that that's the red lines, all those dotted red lines across there, and the blue lines are are, are times when you get above uh, zero. And I just so, I just as you're speaking, Tim, I just put up the Bloomberg with it, and and live right now it's minus two point three nine six percent. Okay, cool, I got it. Nice, wow. Right, right. So I, I bought some options. Uh, probably should have waited a little closer to the low here. But usually this is pretty close to the lows. Not saying the exact day of the lows, but you're, in, you're normally in the vicinity. So if you look at GDX and all those red lines, you can see where they came in at. It came in the October low pretty good. Came in that looks like a June low, maybe a July low uh, of the last year. The, the one in the previous year didn't work out. But they work out about 80, you know, better than 80% of the time. It picked out the uh, COVID low. Uh, it got down to like minus 3% below. So, you know, if you get these crashes, this premium thing's pretty good. Yeah, so, this is great to know, now, man. Again, that's, that's pretty uh, wild. Ahead. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, if you go back and look in, in uh, that shaded pink area there, yeah, that stayed, that stayed below minus 2 for like six months. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that was a, a significant. A big one. You know, that, yeah. With yeah, that. a big one because the yep. sentiment was so bearish at that time, even though the market rallied, nobody believed it was going to go anywhere. Yep. So I'm thinking that was a major low uh, that probably won't be tested for years. Be and you know what's like amazing, too, Tim and folks, is that when – People get bearish on gold. They really get bearish, man. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and according to this chart, you know. Yes. In, uh, no, you know, that's why I'm uh, digging it. Right. <laughs> yeah. The market rallies now. It ain't going to go very far. And they just kept rallying. And, yeah. And so it, and it's uh, it pretty much, I think, the market is a significant intermittent term low. Or actually, I think it's a longer term low. I think in um, some indicators. Uh, I, uh, yeah, here, let's flip to chart six. Okay, here we go. I got it. Right. The monthly, okay, the bottom window is the uh, weekly uh, uh, cumulative advanced decline for GDX. Yep. Next window up is the cumulative advanced or up-down volume for GDX. So it looks at the internals of what's going on in GDX. The gold stocks are in GDX. 
looks you know how how many growing up how many how, how much volume on the up stocks and all this other stuff so you want both those squiggly lines actually trending up and i put a bollinger band on them and normally when they're above a bollinger band you got a trend that's that's really going up and the bottom window is advanced decline you're at the bollinger band right now but the next one up you're still way above or not, not way above but you're above the bollinger band as long as those two indicators on the weekly time frame can stay above the bollinger band and i don't have this chart shown but the monthly really dictates the really big trends and i have a monthly chart of the cumulative advanced decline and up down volume and right now uh, both those on the monthly time frame are heading up, but still below the mid Bollinger band. Right. And once the monthly gets above the mid Bollinger band, it's really stable. It doesn't whip back and forth. So once it gets above Bollinger bands, a lot of times it just stays above the Bollinger band for months and sometimes years. Uh, so uh, I like to have this GDX market actually at least hold steady, if not perform, uh, to the upside over the next. Uh, probably about 30 days. The only reason why I'm saying 30 days, it'll probably push the monthly uh, cumulative advance decline and monthly uh, up-down volume above their mid-Bollinger bands. And when you get that, that pretty much is a, a, an all-clear sign, probably for at least over the next 12 months, that the market's going to be heading higher. So the weeklies are, are the intermittent term times. It can give you a signal that could last, you know, uh, uh, several months. But the uh, the monthlies can signal that you can get rallies for the year or even longer. And so I'm hoping that this month GDX remains relatively strong, if not heading higher. We got a lot to look forward for in 2024. You got to love it. Yeah. Well, Tim, this is always a pleasure, of course. And, you know, folks, you got something live here today, man. That's the bottom line. You got live as to why he wanted to, you know, basically thread this needle and then go along. Tim, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. All right. Okay, Love man. Have a great Thanks. one. Stay right there, right. folks. Come right back.